Hey everyone, my name is Zach Bailey. I'm the lead partner success strategist here at Just Uno. Uh, my role is to help uh, agency accounts as well as just really anyone with Just Uno uh, with any type of CRO or what I like to call on-site messaging strategy, really uh, helping you to supercharge your, your list growth strategies, help reduce items being left in cart or you know keep people on your website longer. But more than anything, and the most important part is to help you gather data around the visitors that are landing on your site so that you can do custom segmented messages. So thanks so much for taking uh, the time out of your busy day. We know this is a, a busy time of year, but thanks so much for joining us for some great tips from some experts in the space of e-commerce here. Thank you, Zach. Perfect. Hey guys, I'm uh, Jason from Lawsline. I'm um, one of the uh, strategic customer success managers here. Uh, so those who don't know, Lawsline is uh, an add-on to your e-commerce store that provides a loyalty platform for your customers. So keeping them, um, you know, engaged, retaining those customers, and um, you know, hopefully turn them from one-off purchases into uh, you know lifelong customers. Hi everyone, I'm very excited to be here. My name is Sarah Kang and I'm the Strategic Partnership Manager at Aftership. Aftership is a shipment tracking solution that provides businesses with branded tracking experience and shipment visibility across all carriers in one easy to use portal. Our goal is essentially to drive sales and help create a better customer experience. My role here at Aftership is to manage our relationships with our tech, agency, and platform partners. The focus of the partnership team is to create a well-rounded partner ecosystem that offers solutions to help enhance our customers' capabilities. Hey everyone, my name is Stuart Clay and I'm the Director of Marketplace Strategic Services here at Tenuity, which means that I help our team identify and establish new and emerging retail media opportunities. Uh, I've been in the e-com industry a little over 10 years with my last four to five, having a direct focus in retail media management and operations. I'm excited to be here with you today to talk all things retail media and holiday success. Greg? Thanks, Stuart. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Greg Zakowitz here, uh, e-commerce expert for OmniSend, which is an email and SMS marketing automation platform. Uh, my job is D2C email marketing, trends, reporting, everything like that. And believe it or not, I've been doing uh, and have been involved in D2C email marketing for 17 going on 18 years. So a long, long time and uh, excited to uh, be together with this great group of uh, group of individuals. Awesome. Thank you so much, Greg. And thank you so much to the panelists. Um, Greg, I'm either way underqualified or you're underqualified. Uh, so something's got to give here. Uh, <laughs> one of us is something, you know, I'll <laughs> let everyone else decide what that something is. Uh, awesome. Well, great to have y'all all here. Yeah. Um, for everyone in the audience, we are thrilled to have this lineup of speakers. Um, their combined like wealth of insight is going to be awesome today, but I'm going to shut up and I'm going to let them start talking because, uh, they're the ones you want to hear from about this, uh, upcoming holiday season. But before I do that, one last final note. And I'm going to say this in the chat a thousand times too. If you have questions, th throw it in the chat. And then two, if at any point you need to leave the webinar or anything like that, this webinar is being recorded and it will be sent out tomorrow to all registrants. Um, so with that in mind, we are going to go ahead and get started with Zach. Just do now. Final zero tips. All right. So just a little bit about Just Uno real quick. What is Just Uno? So Just Uno is a... Uh, a platform for you to have access to CRO data, and it helps you to uh, quickly, when someone lands on your website, Justuno starts to build a digital fingerprint, um, things such as source, uh, visitor information, new visitor, return visitor, what does this visitor have in cart, which allows you to have that segmentation strategy, and we will hear this uh, over and over you know, providing custom messages is going to help you increase your opportunity uh, to create a better visitor experience on your site, as well as to help reduce any type of conversion friction. So, Mike, let's go ahead and take a look at some tips and some examples. So when you're doing on-site messaging, remember the first part, like we said, is gathering data. So you're going to want to go ahead and install. Once you install, Think about this, 98% of visitors, right? According to emarketing.com, they're gonna land on your site, 
they're not going to convert and they possibly might not even submit a form so start to at least gather that data information uh, to help yourself increase conversions now or even later but if you are running your uh, on-site messaging the first thing to think about right now is adding timers why timers psychologically help visitors to understand that there's an urgency and a scarcity to this best of year sale that's happening now or it's about to happen so think about that as well uh greg will go into some strategies around creating like vip lists and building on lifetime value so think about that and supercharge that list growth strategy uh with that banner or with that on-site center uh, lead capture, or maybe even like a gamification that you've probably seen on some of your favorite sites. The next thing we talked about here is knowing your visitors. Where are my visitors coming from? Am I paying ads and visitors are coming from certain UTMs within those ads or Facebook IDs or Google ad IDs, or are they coming from certain email flow uh, UTMs, uh, building on loyalty programs? Are they coming from that uh, portion of your website, or do we need to send that first-time purchaser, purchaser to a loyalty line and sign up so that you can build on that lifetime value? The third thing is take a look down here in the bottom right corner. You'll see that you've got this what's called a floating CTA. A lot of visitors, like we said, they're going to land on your website. After maybe a few seconds, they'll see your uh, on-site message, ask them to join your list. But if they don't see the immediate value there, they might close that so they can navigate to the information that drove them to the site or to that product. But then later they can engage back with that um, incentive that you provided by that quick click of that CTA that's floating around, allowing them to still see all the content on your site. Those are some great uh, tips for you. If you have any questions about that, reach out to myself at Just Uno and we can help you with that. The big thing here to think about now is your mobile experience. The majority of that first part of searches are going to start at mobile. So there's a feature to turn off on your lead capture mobile, uh, which is called the closed dim. That's great for desktop, but because we use our thumbs on mobile, that closed dim uh, will accidentally close the promotion before maybe somebody had the chance to engage with it. We saw that floating uh, CTA. We also have a tab feature that you can use. Fonts don't have a font that's less than 14 PX because on your iOS, it'll create this kind of zoom in weird experience. Make your promotions easy to close. That's a good experience. People got the information, but let them navigate through your site. And again, this time of year, banners that follow people around reinforcing what your uh, sale is, as well as maybe like a CTA button that can send them to a gift guide page. Thanks so much. We look forward to seeing any questions come through the chat about on-site messaging, about CRO, or just put your website in and we can collaborate later on uh, around maybe some uh, CRO and conversion strategies. Appreciate it, everybody. Awesome. Thank you very much, Zach. And we're going to go right on ahead with Jason. Perfect. Thank you very much. So yeah, hi everyone. I'm Jason here from uh, Lordsline. Uh, like I mentioned before, Lordsline is um, a way of adding a Lords program to your e-commerce store, uh, so people can kind of spend money, get points, use those points on rewards, and otherwise engage with your store on a bigger level. Um, so today I'm going to be sharing our three top tips for creating long-lasting loyalty this Black Friday and Cyber Monday period. So Lordsline uh, recently commissioned some consumer research in the US and the UK. So we did some homework uh, to find out what shoppers really want from their Black Friday and Cyber Monday experience this year. Um, so the top three tips are based on the findings of this consumer research. And to kick things up, my first retention tactic uh, to keep your holiday shoppers sticking around is number one, promote your Lord's program in your post-purchase emails. Okay. So um, yeah, yeah, just whenever somebody checks out, whenever somebody, you know, interacts with the store, just let them know, hey, we do have a Lord's program. Come back, you know, and some point, get that retention journey going. So from the research we found that 72% of shoppers said that they're most likely to join a Lord's program this Black Friday and Cyber Monday within about one to three days 
of their purchase, with numbers steadily dwindling from den day three onwards. So we've kind of got this period where people are most receptive to, to making that account and then coming back. So get your loyalty program messaging out in the post-purchase communication within that one to two, one to three day uh, period to engage customers when they're most receptive and make sure to keep your brand at the top of their inbox. Okay. Tip number two is run double or triple points events. So running double points events during the holidays is a simple and effective way to get your one-time shoppers coming back for more. And we know that points are a big incentive for consumers this year. Our research has shown that 68% of shoppers would be motivated to make a purchase this peak season if they had access to loyalty promotions. So to transform these customers into repeat purchases, um, include points balances within those post-purchase emails so they're aware of the points that they've acquired. This way, um, it'll be likely um, you'll increase the likelihood of them returning to your store because they'll want to redeem um, the rewards that they've built up and um, start collecting even more points. So putting them on a good path uh, to keep coming back. Um, we love loyalty um, promotions like the one that you can see for uh, face theory on screen. Uh, the offer is super clear so the customers know exactly what they're getting and they know exactly how that, uh, that process works. And tip number three will be reward referrals. So those program doesn't always have to be a retention channel. It can be a little bit of a growth channel as well. So make sure your, uh, your incentives, you incentivize referrals this Black Friday and Cyber Monday as 78% of shoppers are likely to refer a friend or family member following a positive Black Friday Cyber Monday experience. It's a good way of uh, you know, growing that customer base. Uh, this is a hugely cost-effective way to get your uh, brand in front of a new audience. And even better, they'll already have that level of trust with your brand as they've been referred by somebody that they already know. Uh, so by refer, uh, rewarding your customers for referrals, you're not only giving them a reason to stay connected and keep collecting those points, but you're also reaching brand new potential customers at the same time. Now for maximum effect, reward the customer who made the referral and your newly referred, uh, your newly referred shopper to encourage both parties to return to shop with you. So on the screen, you can see um, Nude's happy plan gives the person who made the referral 10% off their next order and the new customer gets 20% off theirs. And a little bonus tip, uh, get referral prompts out there fast enough and you could even get referrers and referees returning before you close out you know, your Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales. So perfect. Thank you very much for uh, obviously looking at um, some of our loads of programs, some of our tips. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, joining in. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jason. Really appreciate it. Sweet. All right, we're going to go right on ahead to Stuart from Tenuity. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. Hey, everyone. My name is Stuart Clay, and I'm the Director of Marketplace Strategic Services here at Tenuity, the largest performance marketing firm across streaming TV and the triopoly of Google, Facebook, and Amazon. I'm excited to be here with you today to talk all things retail media and how to prep for a successful holiday selling season. Next page, please. When it comes to retail media, the Q4 planning and prep can be difficult due to the segmented and disparate nature of current retail media landscape. Because of this, it's important to take a high level view of your planning and prep elements to ensure all efforts are complementing one another in an attempt to better improve performance as a whole. Your ad efforts won't get very far if your operational elements such as pricing and listing quality aren't optimized to influence conversions and your organic sales will have a hard time gaining traction in those extremely competitive holiday digital aisles without the use of advertising to help boost visibility. Now, the guidance provided in these slides, um, it does extend out to most retail media offerings, but for the sake of this example, I'll just go ahead and use Walmart. Starting with tip one, perform an operational audit. So as mentioned, uh, your operational elements can have a dramatic effect on advertising performance. If a person has just enough info to wonder what that item is, but not enough info to convert, then that triggers a click without a conversion and that's spend money down the drain. To eliminate this risk, it's important to perform a full operational audit to review things like the following. First, we have inventory setup. Do you have any buffers or rules in place to mitigate oversells? And what does your inventory run rate look like in accordance to your inbound shipments? And from a pricing standpoint, do you have competitive pricing on all items? Do you have price parity? Walmart's actually one of the marketplaces that will suppress your items if you don't have price parity across competing marketplaces. So that's definitely a high priority. 
And when it comes to fulfillment, and more so for 3P sellers, but is two-day live and available? Any planning needs with fulfillment services such, such as FBA or WFS? And lastly is listing quality. And again, this is a big one. If your content isn't optimized to convert, you will have a hard time gaining traction on the marketplace. Not only that, but any ad dollars spent against those listings is not being maximized. Which brings us to step two, ensuring ad efforts are positioned for heightened demand. So let's dive in here. First, we have bids. Last Q4, we saw CPCs raised by upwards of 50%. So it's incredibly important to adjust bids for the upcoming demand. Next, we have budgets. Your bids won't get very far if you don't have budgets to accommodate those bids. Make sure you check your daily, monthly, and or total budgets to verify that your budgets have been adjusted in accordance to expectations. Next is a keyword review. Leverage search data to better understand seasonal consumer trends and adjust your keywords in accordance to these trends. And lastly, we have accelerators. These are things like device and position multipliers and ad type expansion into sponsored brands, display, social, email, and more. So now that we've touched on operational setup and advertising, the third piece of the puzzle or the third tip is to ensure business readiness. In short, it's the holiday season, so we need to expect the unexpected. For starters, establish alerts. And this can come in the form of pricing, inventory, fulfillment, and customer support. Most of these areas have thresholds that need to be met to maintain a good seller standing. So being able to tie an alert to these thresholds can prove advantageous. Next is very important and that's key contacts. Ensure you have key contacts both internally and externally and that you have a clear understanding of SLAs and availability. And with those key contacts, you will also wanna consider mapping out appropriate escalation paths. Given the number of teams involved in retail media advertising and operations, it's crucial that all resources have a clear understanding of the steps needed to take if and when an issue arises. So as you can see, there are a lot of moving parts here and all the parts are relying on one another for a successful selling season. So do yourself a favor and perform a holistic review on your efforts to ensure that you're set up for success. And if you need any help or have any questions along the way, email me or hit me up on LinkedIn and I would be happy to help. I'll now pass things back to Michael for our next section on email and SMS. Thanks everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stuart. I know there's like a ton to dive into, into there um, in that topic. So uh, I really appreciate the quick run through. Uh, and I'm sure we'll get some good questions on that as well. But yeah, next up, it's Greg from Omnicent. With right, the let's keep the, <laughs> yeah, let's keep this train rolling here. So uh, thanks again, everyone, for your time. Uh, very quickly, uh, for who Omnisend is, I mentioned earlier, but if you're late, we're an email and SMS marketing automation platform built specifically for e-commerce merchants, plug and play integrations with the major e-com platforms like Shopify, uh, WooCommerce, BigCommerce. We have email, SMS, web push notifications, and built-in uh, native uh, sync to Google ad properties and Facebook and Instagram properties as well. So need more, just check us out on the website. I'll, I'll throw it in the, the chat section, but let's jump into the actual content today and what you guys are here to learn about. And there's four things I want to talk about uh, very briefly, and then we'll hit any questions in the Q and a portion, uh, first around timing. All right. We're already in the marketing phase for it. Now, a lot of brands started last month, but this is the week where, uh, you should start to see a really big ramp up. I tell, always tell clients, and we've seen this trend coming up the last few years around the Cyber 10 period, and that's going to start the Sunday before Black Friday, so Sunday of Black Friday week, and we see a lot of sales for Black Friday, and that goes through Giving Tuesdays, so the day after Cyber Monday. 10 huge shopping days of the year, you'll find uh, close to half of all holiday sales will come uh, in this 10-day uh, this window here. So pretty much what that means is you can kind of vary your uh, your marketing strategy however you want, but I would not wait until those very key days like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, even just Thanksgiving Day, so day before. Uh, I would start running those sales earlier. You don't have to discount and give away the farm, but I would start uh, jumping on people while you can because people are already shopping, right? And we've seen that with all the reports and all the data, so jump on it while you can, but that Cyber 10 is going to be a big uh, time for you. Second tip is going to be around intent and value adds. Think about intent is something every brand should focus on through the entire year. But this time people are buying gifts or buying things for themselves or taking advantage of sales. My wife's birthday is in mid-December. I'm buying for the holidays. I'm buying for the kids. I'm buying for family. And I'm also buying for birthdays. So I am jumping on everything I can. So think about the holiday shopper. 
and the intent. If they're on your website, there is some sort of intent there. We know they're doing that. So with all your messaging, your uh, promotional messaging and your automated messaging, focus on those differentiators like sh uh, shipping. If you offer free shipping, promote it very heavily. Uh, returns, free returns or extended return policies, always a, a favorite of mine during this time period. Utilize testimonials, uh, top rated products inside your messaging as well. You want to build consumer confidence here. Uh, with Jason mentioned loyalty points before. If you give double or triple loyalty points during this time of year, reinforce those things. So you want to put this in all of your messages, hammer it hard, build that consumer confidence to capture that sale. Next, focus on automations. Automations you should be doing year round, but not all automations are created equal. So first half of this year, all of last year as well, where about 30% of all email marketing orders come from automated messages and they make up around 2% of all sends. So 30% on 2%, use those because they are behavior-based and we have more people on your website, more triggers. You can see uh, the chart in the upper right corner. This is from the November, that's Cyber 10 period of last year. So if you're waiting to those last days, you can see the automations across the board are pretty consistent there. People are shopping. Uh, but I mentioned, not all automations are created equal. Welcome, card abandonment, browse abandonment. These are the three I would hone in on the most. These three first half of this year, out of all automated orders, 88% came from these three messages. So optimize them, use the, the value adds in your messaging, shorten time periods. I know we got a question on that, so I'll save that until the Q&A period, but utilize those automations where you can. Make some money while you sleep. And then very quickly, SMS, it's going to be your other go-to here. We've seen a rise over the past three years. Uh, so far, the first half of this year, we're already up on 37% of sends over last year's, uh, which was a hundred, nearly 100% increase from the year before. So utilize SMS, especially on those major days and inside your automation. So Black Friday, Cyber Monday, cut through some of the inbox noise, send some ex, uh, extra messages out there. Most of these are read within three minutes. So last chance reminders, flash sales, whatever you want to do there, utilize this. And if you do these four things, don't have to go to the wall, but do these four things and they'll work very well for you. And you'll get some incremental revenue on there and hopefully even more so. So uh, I'll take any questions and I'll put some resources in the chat section when everyone is finished speaking here. And uh, hopefully we'll get everything answered for you. Bing bada boom. Thank you so much, Greg. That was fantastic. All right. Yeah, no, we have some awesome questions coming in from the chat and into the Q&A area. So we'll get to those right after Sarah's presentation from AfterShip. Sarah, I'll let you take it away. Thanks, Michael. So I'm Sarah Kang from AfterShip, and I thought we'd start with a brief introduction of who we are. So AfterShip is a post-purchase platform that offers branded shipment tracking notifications, returns, and exchanges. We support e-commerce businesses in driving revenue through branded tracking pages, promoting relevant product recommendations, as well as increasing website traffic by leveraging high engagement rates with shipment notifications. Ultimately, our goal is to improve your customers' experiences through maintaining end-to-end -end control of their journey. For us, we cannot stress enough the importance of a seamless post-purchase experience all year round, but this is especially important around Black Friday, Cyber Monday to help with repeat orders and customer retention. We're here today to share with you four important last minute holiday tips that will help enhance your customer's post-purchase experience. So let's get started with tip number one. Continue customer engagement even after they've purchased. While we all know Black Friday, Cyber Monday will boost sales, most of your customers were initially attracted by the amazing discounts you're offering. So now that they're here, how do we make them keep coming back, even without the additional discounts? Aftership can help answer this question. They've already purchased from you. They already know your brand. They already know your products. Now let's continue this relationship with them. Let's ensure the post-purchase experience is exactly what they're looking for. So ultimately we can increase brand loyalty. Customer touch points are so key. Let's not forget about them the moment that they order. A great example of this is one of our AfterShip customers baked by Melissa. 23% of their revenue is actually generated from email shipment notifications. Building this into your process can create more touch points with your customers and of course, promote brand loyalty. That leads us into tip number two. Know what your customers want to know. What information is really important to your customers and what do they really want to know most once they have placed their order? Well, for me personally and most e-commerce customers, they want to know that their order has been shipped and they want to know when it's on their front doorstep. The open rate of shipment notification emails can be as high as 65%. Give your customers the information they want in an easy and digestible way. 
Being top of mind for customers during Black Friday and Cyber Monday can make or break your relationship. We all know e-commerce businesses will see a huge influx in order volume, but how do you really retain those customers? Shipment visibility is a huge piece of that, which is extremely important when it comes to that seamless customer experience we're all trying to create. Tip number three, proactively manage your customer's expectations rather than reactively. High sales volumes from Black Friday, Cyber Monday come with high shipment volume. This is why shipment visibility and constant communication from the merchant side is so important. You need your customers to be informed about tracking updates or delays. This not only increases your customer touch points, like we mentioned in tip number one, but also helps you manage your customer's expectations proactively. You're bringing them all the information that they need before they come to you with these same questions. Angry customers constantly inquiring about where's my order is the last thing that you want. Not only does it bog down your customer care teams, but it creates a negative customer experience. You always want to ensure that you're proactively managing your customers' expectations. This only leads to repeat customers and brand loyalty. In a recent behavior research study conducted by Aftership, three out of the top four frustrations about e-commerce customers were delivery or return related, including not being able to ensure product quality and the risk of their package being lost, as well as delayed deliveries. Our customer mouse saw up to a 54% reduction in Wismo tickets when customers are notified of their shipment progress, positively impacting the customer service team and improving their overall customer experience. Now, last but not least, on to tip number four. Always keep your customers on your website. And what do we mean by this? You don't want your customers floating around to carry your websites to get shipment notifications. You want to keep your customers on your website where you can control their journey. Aftership sees an average of 3.4 times more views on our shipment tracking page. This is a branded page, so why not take the opportunity to showcase more of your website and your products? This will keep your customers on your own page experiencing a seamless post-purchase journey leading to trust, brand loyalty, and if I haven't said it enough, repeat purchases. An example of this is one of our customers, Vivino, an online wine store. They've experienced a 30% hike in, in sales after Aftership's branded tracking and product recommendations, overall improving their customers' experiences. Again, we can't stress enough the importance of maintaining that end-to-end -end control of a customer's journey by driving traffic to your website rather than the carrier's. So those were the top four last minute holiday tips we wanted to share with you all from Aftership. We hope you found them useful. If you'd like to learn more about Aftership's capabilities and how we can support your business, we're actually offering everyone attending this webinar a special Black Friday Cyber Monday offer. If you scan the QR code on the screen, you'll receive one month free of Aftership. If you wanna incorporate some of these tips that we've given into your Black Friday Cyber Monday strategy, please take advantage of this offer. I also have left my email in the chat. So if you'd like to learn more, please reach out to me. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was great. A uh, lot of good tips right there. And we're actually getting a number of questions around uh, these like sorts of communications, like you mentioned, uh, after they order and like how to make the most of that. And that's what we're going to start with. Um, yes, thank you to everyone in the audience. Sorry, I just <laughs> interrupted you. Uh, but we're going to go right into it, right into this sort of topic. Um, so to start us off, Catherine wanted to know, um, what are some good things to include in these transactional emails to get the most out of the transactional being, I mean, from card abandonment to also once you place the order, what are some things you could include there? Um, and Greg or Sarah, one of y'all wanna help in. I can start us off on the shipment mm -hmm. uh, confirmation side. So there's a couple key things we want to include in shipping confirmation email. So, I mean, one of the first most important is a recap of the purchase. That detailed description typically will come from the order confirmation. But in terms of shipment confirmation, you want to include that link to a branded tracking page. And if you're really looking for an A+, plus, you're, you should include an estimated delivery date as well in those emails. Sorry, I lost my ear piece for a second. I'll jump in quickly here and add on it. So looking at an optimization opportunity here, some things you can look at adding. Uh, and by the way, I completely agree with Sarah. So um, this is all in addition to is some of the things that you typically hear about, right? So, um, you know, top rated products, having a section there that highlights those. If it's the holiday season, you know, you might want to do a, a call out for gift cards. I know gift cards for some brands, they sell a lot. For some others, uh, they sell very few. So, but it's worth it. 
Um, look at resources. So, you know, you could put some customer testimonials in there, just continue to build brand confidence, but some resources, if you have how to's or uh, videos showing, uh, you know, if we're talking about beauty, it could be again, how to's on stuff, but product care, right? Things like this. Those are all things that help build that continued consumer confidence in there. If you have an SMS program, you're looking at building an SMS program, have a call out in there to sign up for your SMS program as well, because it's something they may not uh, currently be subscribed with. They may not even know you have one, but it's something you could throw in there as well. So again, people are going to be opening these messages even after they've received it, because it might be that thing top of mind for them. It's an easy place they know where to get to. So uh, try to continue those clicks from there. And I think if you do that, you'll see incremental things over time. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah and Greg. Yeah, a lot of these questions are sort of blending together and because they all kind of relate. But that's the most ideal thing, I think, uh, because it all does relate. So, um, and this was just sort of touched on, but just to make sure, Alexis uh, wanted to know, how can we keep customers active, active with us post BFCM when most of their holiday shopping is already completed? What are some good strategies to keep them active and engaged? Um, Jason, since you're the loyalty expert, uh, if you want to kick us off here. Yeah, this sounds like right up my street. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> obviously from the, uh, the loyalty spec, uh, perspective, having them come in during that sale period, um, you know, they might be a new customer, they're attracted um, by um, that sale. Um, if you have, you know, a loyalty program in place, then obviously you'll have those points kind of building up and then obviously we can email them on the back of that data being like hey you know you've earned enough points to get a reward or you know hey welcome to the loyalty program um you know that kind of thing just keeping them coming back and saying you've got a little bit extra from the sale so that you can come back make further purchases and then obviously rolls from there now obviously if you don't have a loyalty program in place there are some other things that you can do um you know that should um that help uh so number one would be like timing your promotions so just making sure that um you know people know when a sale begins when the sale is going to stop you might be able to get a repeat purchase within that window uh so making sure that it's clearly sound posted you know you could use some uh you know sms some emails or some on-site messaging as well to do that um and yeah just make sure that um you know it's clearly sound post uh sign posted when it starts and ends it also goes as far as like uh, personalization. So obviously you're bringing in all these new customers um, and, you know, they might, um, you know, build that, build in that relationship with your brand. So if you personalize your emails post Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you're going to start building that relationship a little bit more. You know, they're not just coming for the sale, they're coming for the brand at that point. Maybe some people have been waiting all year for this sale and they want to be able to, you know, purchase a little bit more. So making sure that you're sending them personalized offers, personalized emails, SMS, um, and making product recommendations based on our activity makes them feel a little bit closer to yourselves as a brand. And then, um, yeah, I think uh, kind of the last one uh, there, um, would be um, making sure that the customer has all of the information uh, before they make their first Black Friday, Cyber Monday purchase, and particularly around returns here. So you want them to have the most positive Black Friday, Cyber Monday experience that they can get. Um, you know, so uh, so you can get them, keep them coming back. You want to leave them with a really, uh, you know, positive note. Uh, so make sure that you know your returns are clearly labeled. You don't want any for that, like that, any disputes. Uh, so making sure that all of that information is readily available for the customer uh, and yeah, start that relationship off on a, a really good note uh, during this period. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. Um, something that I think actually fits in really nicely here, pull us back up. Uh, so with that sort of messaging aspect and keeping that relationship going and like really starting off a good note and then also just, you know, keeping it going, uh, can't see who asked this, but they asked about, you know, should they adjust their automated automated messages? And if so, how? Like their order thank you, should be notifications. So I feel like those would be a really good opportunity to, you know, start personalizing, start um, building out those relationships. So um, in terms of, of those automated messages, uh, how about, uh, Greg, do you want to hop in, I suppose? 
Sure. And this, this somewhat ties in, but I want to add on to the last one just very briefly as well. So I can have spoken about post-purchase messaging for hours before. Uh, very specific within post-purchase. I'll, I'll avoid the whole thing here. But one of the things you can do, and I would recommend this year round, but it's especially important for first-time holiday customers, is have some sort of message set up. And this can be automated, but uh, even if it's a manual send one time a year, because you have, you know, Christmas or, you know, when Hanukkah ends, whatever it might be on specific days is send it an email, you know, seven to 14 days after whatever date, if they're a first time purchaser and just say, Hey, thanks for your purchase. We just wanted to make sure everything was perfect for you. Let us know if you had any issues because we want to take care of it. Most of the time people will love that. They'll look at it and say, hey, these people care about me. You know, it's a very good, big customer service play. But sometimes you will get people that write back and say, you know what, this thing was X, Y, Z, but they weren't mad enough to contact you and get that. And that can really save a customer here. So don't overlook those very obvious things like just sending in a message, checking in on make sure their purchase experience and everything was really good. Uh, as far as the automations go, uh, the three things, again, I talk about those three, the welcome, the card abandonment, browse abandonment here. I think the big things you want to look for during the holiday season is, you know, my recommendation is always if you send the welcome series out, suppress people from promotional sends during that period. A little tougher to do during a high shopping and high intent period. So you might want to cut that down to maybe just one or two messages, holiday theme those messages, or just leave it as the welcome message and get them into those promotional messages as well. Might be one option. Card abandonment, I know we had a question on this as well, uh, specifically, but think about shortening those time periods. If you're sending at, say, 12 hours or 24 hours and then another a day later, shorten those down. Send one, one or two hours after they abandon. Uh, send another one you know, within that first 24 hours, so really two messages in a day. Uh, if they're going to shop, they have high intent. They're going to be purchasing those a lot quicker. Use browse abandonment. That's going to keep people engaged uh, for the timing there. And those are things I would do for adjusting your automations as far as timing goes. I talked about message content, customer service testimonials, uh, how to's if you need them in there, things like that. You can put inside your messaging as well. But that would those are kind of the high things I'd recommend for automated messages. Look at those timing. Look at suppression lists. If you can't tell everyone, there's a lot to go into here. So we, I really, really recommend uh, connecting with our speakers on LinkedIn. Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, no, and I mean that in the best way. There's a ton to go into. Uh, but I'm actually going to pivot us very slightly towards, uh, we had one question come in, and it was uh, for Stuart. What is one, What are some of the most common mistakes you see advertisers making while prepping or even as like during the run up for uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, what are the like, most common mistakes that you see that they could maybe get ready for and prepare for now? Yeah, definitely. So um, I would say the main thing that I see is um, too much team segmentation. And so, uh, you know, the, the theme of my presentation was that everything is, is kind of connected and that all efforts uh, impact one another. And what I see a lot is that, you know, you'll have an advertising team over here just focused on advertising. You'll have an operations team over here and they're kind of segmented and not talking to one another. You got fulfillment all the way down here. But what you're not realizing during holidays that when this demand increases, if you pair that with an advertising, um, let's say you're doing category lockout or something that gets a lot of eyes on it, that's going to bring a lot of orders in um, from an operational standpoint, and that flows all the way down to your fulfillment too. And so you got to be ready with resources to accommodate that, um, and you really need to understand the whole the whole flow of the thing there. And so I see a lot of sellers that stay kind of segmented in their teams. And it, it results in a lot of issues, whether that's, um, you know, delayed orders or miscommunication, things like that. And so I would say get ahead of it um, and uh, sync with your teams and do what you can to, you know, trade key contacts lists, escalation paths and kind of map things out there. And then the other big piece I would say is um, definitely establish alerts. So there's, uh, like I said, a lot of your performance metrics are tied to certain thresholds that um, on these uh, retail media channels that um, you need to meet those thresholds to be in good selling standing. And so I would tie alerts to these types of thresholds and whether that's, hey, we haven't received an order in the last 45 minutes, something's up here, or, um, you know, uh, we, uh, 
you know, we haven't sent an outbound fulfillment or we just haven't gotten an, an order on an item that we deem as a, a um, high priority item. So something's going on there. Um, so any like outliers like that where you think, all right, they're, they're time-based, we need some triggers to, to ping us when some issues might arise, um, that, that could be a saving grace, um, especially when we get into peak selling times. Right on. Thank you very much, Stuart. Yeah, a uh, lot to dive into there. And actually that makes me think of um, a question for Zach here. And that is, so with like such large tech stacks nowadays, and you know, there's so much happening on the site, what are maybe some of the most uh, common mistakes you've seen in terms of on-site experiences, uh, in terms of maybe just making making sure that certain integrations and certain uh, technology solutions are synced up properly, and maybe also what are some uh, preemptive strategies that people implement? Yeah, I think the biggest thing there is, uh, uh, I think Greg mentioned this, but it's testing, you know, and, and Stuart mentioned this as well, is put yourself in the visitor's shoe. Start all the way at the top. What are the incentives? Where are those messages coming from? And really go through that same path. Land on your website. Um, you know, interact with your loyalty programs. Interact with your uh, emails. See how those flows are going. See if everything's triggering when it should and the right way. Uh, that can go a long way because you're creating an experience throughout that entire process and people remember that and it's a competitive advantage if it flows well if the tracking page is there if that information is provided people come back for that uh, so that's the biggest opportunity I know a lot of people at this time say they don't have enough time they didn't have enough time but remember this is your baby this is your business the most important part of your business is your customers put yourself in their shoes if they are seeing things and landing on your site and those aren't connecting, they're not gonna come back and they're gonna leave quick and they won't remember you. <laughs> Hate to say it. <laughs> Very good point, Zach. Uh, and then actually while we have you, uh, so I work for Just Doing of course too, and we do pop-ups of course. And I know in our space, pop-ups kind of have a bad name. Um, and you know, for you know, ten years ago, with good reason, people used to abuse them and things like that. So, Zach, one question I want to ask you is, what pop-ups or what you know on-site experiences should should be avoided at all costs to not annoy users, to not make them want to leave a site? Uh, you know, what's most important to avoid uh, during such a high traffic season? You know, one of the biggest things to understand when you're doing on-site messaging is when and who those messages should display to. Don't have messages that display over and over and at the wrong time. So again, when we talk about testing, make sure that uh, however your, what we'll call quote unquote rules to when that displays uh, is accurate because if it's displaying too often or too early uh, or on a blog page when people are doing research, uh, and they haven't even had time to scroll down, it will cause people to have a bad taste in their mouth. But remember this, with on-site messaging, you need to make sure that if I see an incentive on a social media ad and I land and I don't see where that 20% is, I'm gone. I feel like somebody duped me. So those are the pieces to consider where you're now increasing your visitor experience. So if I add an item to cart, why not tell me that if I uh, join the loyalty program, I can actually earn points for that. So I'm gonna send people or provide them what I call an option with that message. Maybe it's done in a banner, maybe it's a slide out. Those are things to test. But remember, those are valuable. Those are competitive separators. Those increase the experience. Again, like product tracking pages, you know, that's a great, area for if people come back to the site, maybe direct them there if they've already made a purchase. The biggest thing is being able to gather that data, but don't display promotions too often and at the wrong time. And if you think you're doing that, that's when you should reach out to somebody like us so we can help you figure that out and unpack that. Very well said, Zach. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, and so in our space, I feel like there is just so much brand noise. I mean, there's just a lot of brands and Everything we've spoken about today so far is just another great opportunity to differentiate yourself from competitors, right? You know, the better your order and shipping experience is from the moment you press checkout, from the moment you actually get the package, boom, that's better. If you have a loyalty program and it's clean and it works and it's great, boom. And, you know, I could keep going. 
Uh, so thank you to everyone here for all of Phil's great insight because it just it goes to show that point that much more. Um, however, I did want to answer one question that came in. Let me pull that back up. And it was um, this is something I kind of want to hear from all of you actually on. And uh, so they wanted to know with so many special days during the BFCM weekend, Women Led Wednesday, Black Friday, Small Business Saturdays for Monday, Giving Tuesday. They're asking or they're wondering about, should we address these all, some, or none of these in our BFCM approach? And I would love to, because I feel like, you know, there'll be different, different opinions here, but that's probably even good, um, about what y'all think of that. You know, with so many days, what should we be focused on? All of them, none of them, some of them. Uh, and Stuart, you want to kick us off? Yeah, let's do it. Um, and my answer is going to be, it depends on a lot of things. Um, obviously, on the category that you're in, the types of products you're selling, the price points. Um, so all these things are going to factor in. So my best advice for you um, would be to leverage past learnings, right? So we've been through this dance before a number of times, and it, it kind of tweaks year after year, but we have a good idea of kind of what we're going into. So I would say look at your your um, past year's performance and, and just map it out. See if any of those particular days have peaks or valleys. Um, what were the types of products within those days that sold the most? What was the keyword uh, searches going on during that time? Um, that way you kind of gather all this information as, as like a mapping guide and you can implement that for your forward looking strategy this year. So I'll jump in uh, to break the silence here. Uh, so I agree with the depends on like your particular business products you're selling, things like this. Here's how I would look at it. These are all in the cyber 10, by the way. So if you just go cyber 10, you're, you're covered. However, uh, you know, we all know Black Friday, the deals are going to be extended the next day. So Black Friday extended, right? And then Cyber Monday always starts early. And then Cyber Monday always extends to the next day, which is Giving Tuesday, right? So what we've seen over the last few years is Giving Tuesday from a just a complete consumerism standpoint, at least online, it's less about the give back. It's more about, I just get good deals that day. And that's why it's one of the highest shopping days of the year, right? It's more about the offers. Thanksgiving, we know Black Friday starts, but Thanksgiving is one of the highest days of the year now. So I would say, you know, I would focus it around the time period. And if you send an email on Black Friday or Cyber Monday and you leave the term out and just say, our sale starts now, everyone knows it's a Black Friday sale. Everyone knows it's a Cyber Monday sale at that point. And that's kind of your indication. That's my indication, at least, that we don't need to focus on those key days as much. The only time I would say that might be different is if your business model says, I can only offer sales and it can only be this much and it has to be this one day. I can't extend it for three days. Then you want to make it a bigger deal, but your customers probably know that and that you're centering around those events. Uh, but I would say I wouldn't have to, don't be forced to send like a Green Monday sale and call it Green Monday, Giving Tuesday and call it Giving Tuesday. It's a shopping day. It's what it is, right? So market however you want to market it, but it's a shopping day and I would go with that. Yeah, I agree with both Greg and Stuart. I think it's really important to take take a look at what the bigger picture is, right? So there's so many different days out there. It's easy for merchants and customers to get lost in that. And from Aftership's perspective, there's one thing that always kind of helps customer retention, and that's making sure that the post-purchase experience is so seamless. Like Greg said, that we can market it any way we want, um, but there are discounts and there are offers that we're providing to our customers. We want to ensure that they're coming back and they're purchasing. How do we do that? One of the ways is through creating a great user experience and a seamless post-purchase journey through sending those branded shipment notifications and adding opportunities to upsell and making sure that experience is as seamless as possible so we are getting repeat orders. Yeah, I'm going to plug Jason here. So, oh, you're just unmuted. I'm, I'm going to queue you up, Jason, because earlier he mentioned the report that they did with the data analysis, right? And I've, I've lifted some of that for a different presentation I've done. So the two things consumers care about the most from your data, Jason, you can confirm if I'm wrong here, are deals and promotions and free shipping. Those are the number one and number two. So if you look at that around the days, those things fit in. So hopefully that cues you up nicely, Jason. Yeah, perfect. Um, I was just going to chime in from like the loyalty perspective um, you, and more like the like brand relationship kind of side of things. 
Um, if you become a brand that's going to do all of those different sales, yeah, you're going to have a, you know, a high degree of retention. People are going to come back. They're going to buy you know, your on-sale products. But you might instill that methodology in their minds that you are always running sales. And then when it goes into you know summer period or goes into like the the dips, they're not going to appear because they're sale only customers. So during this period, if you kind of keep it like the others were saying, you know, keep it um, to one or two core sales, um, then you kind of keep them in there. It kind of runs with like the mainstream understanding of sales. You no, know, it's Black Friday, Cyber Monday. That's where you go and get your Christmas shopping done, and then. So you can have other things around the site that bring people back during times that isn't sale. So you don't want to be that brand where new customers come in during a sale and they just know that they'll just wait for the next one every time. Um, so we want to foster a good relationship with those customers. And again, like Sarah was saying, really good um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday experience. And obviously keep them coming back on the back of that really good experience that they've had. And, and I'll chime in here, Michael. One thing I really like to see about brands that we see big box stores is, is they do capitalize on these uh, sick little marketing opportunities. Why? Because it helps the store, just like an e-commerce brand store, look active. So like Jason said, you will have visitors who only come for sales. Well, direct them to where you want them to go. Hey, we've got a sale, but it's on our highest priced item, right? So you've already got the margin there because that item... Uh, maybe you have too much inventory. So evaluate, always evaluate your business. Like uh, Jason mentioned, maybe it's the summertime and people aren't expecting sales. So think about that, right? The sale doesn't always have to be some type of discount. It can be, hey, we're going to give people um, you know, more points if they purchase X amount of, of quantity or, or a larger purchased item. Um, but like Greg had mentioned, one of the main reasons people are going to, to leave the site is going to be that shipping cost, right? We've all seen that meme, like I'm good with 50 bucks in my cart, but you ask me for $5 in shipping, like I'm out of here. So think about that. If it's first time purchasers, they don't have the trust in your product. Maybe you just target them. It doesn't have to be something that removes their shipping but it can maybe offset a little bit of that, that sting in that first time purchase. So just be strategic because what you're doing is you're gathering data on what works to drive people back to the site, but also remove conversion friction. So if it's sale related or anything like that, just, just try it, you know? Awesome. Thank you very much, Zach. Thank you to all our panel for answering that question th so thoroughly. Uh, we're going to dive into two quick smaller questions, actually. Uh, we have about five minutes left. Uh, so for everyone in the audience, throw in your last final questions. If we haven't gotten an answer yet, we will. Um, I will make sure that we do, whether it's heat right now or uh, directly on email later on. So we're going to dive right in to uh, this is something I think a number of audience members can relate to. And it's they said... They're a Clavio newbie with a relatively small list, about two to three thousand. So, and they wanted to know what is the what, what what can they do to make the most amount of impact with our small team and small list, despite you know what what can they do do the most uh, of with right now? Uh, Greg, you're the resident email expert. I, I don't answer questions with Clavio. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm sure you're nice. <laughs> uh, so. Small amount of team, I would point you to automations. It's going to be the best bang for the buck you're going to get. Uh, holiday specific things, again, cart, welcome, browse abandonment. Those are the three I would put the heaviest focus on. Some simple things you can do, some beyond the tactics I mentioned before, right? We talked about cart abandonment. So, you know, think about filtering those cart abandonment if you're looking to optimize those messages a little bit more for conversion based on either purchase history or car total. So uh, two super quick walkthroughs of that, right? Purchase history, pretty obvious. Have they never purchased from you before? Maybe you want to send them a different series of messages or, uh, you know, different incentives on there. Are they a one-time purchase not coming back for a second time? You might want to customize that messaging further. If they're a loyal customer, you know, do you need to send them four card abandonment messages during the holidays? Probably not. They're loyal, right? You might want to change your discounts there. So that's an easy one. Uh, car total, right? Think about your free shipping thresholds if you don't have free shipping on everything in the holidays. So 
if your free shipping is 50 bucks and the car total is 35 bucks, right? You might want to offer them some sort of incentive to get over that threshold to qualify for free shipping, but then put a minimum spend on it. So you've got to increase their average order value from there. And of course you could combine these two. So think about those small tweaks within your automations, but by far uh, the best bang, the second best bang for the buck you're going to get is with your automations. Your best is switching to OmniSend, but that's a shameless bug. I just, I kid, I kid, but that's where I would go with it. You utilize the automations where you can. Thank you, Greg. Awesome. All right. Uh, go back down here. And two, so we have about two minutes left. So I want to do two final questions here. And these are about incentives. So Zach, real quick for you, actually for anyone really, um, but what tends to have a better response rate? Offering percent discounts or offering specific dollar amounts off? This, this kind of goes for everyone. I feel like everyone could have some insight here. Um, Zach, if you want to kick us off though. Quick and easy, man. I, I'm not good with math. So give me some dollars. Now, I don't, the best thing you can do, honestly, is just A B test. You know, have an A B test, gather data. People ask me that all the time. You'd be very surprised. Um, so the best thing you can do, and I tell people this if you're working with a marketing company and they're not telling you to to to, to test things. You're working with the wrong one because it's it, no one truly knows what your visitors reactions will be but test it out and i'll tell you this tip use your social media as a, a free uh, focus group put that kind of thing out there see what people react to and if you see a lot of people trending towards the dollar or the percentage then go with that um it's a great way to test your 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 visitor uh market there awesome so, and then actually sort of the same question, but for Jason, what's one of the best incentives you've seen for loyalty programs, especially around the holidays? I mean, I've seen many, many wonderful holiday um, incentives. I've seen um, the normal tried tried and tested ones, uh, like, you know, the 10% uh, off when you sign up, um, you know, getting people into the loyalty program, um, kind of getting a free gift on their item if it goes over a certain amount as well you can always tie that in if you've got any holiday products um, and they always work really well with like new customers or maybe like second time returning customers you know if you've got black friday and they come for the christmas sale as well so those kind of work then if you kind of want to go a little bit more upstream you no know, maybe you've got customers who've been coming with you all year and you kind of want to you know, send them out to christmas with a bang we've seen like Beauty consultations, we've seen holidays, we've seen, um, you know, lifetime supply of your products, stuff like that. So, um, you know, for those really big customers that kind of they see that one year and then they roll up their points into the next year. So we've seen some weird things. But I'd say if you're trying to capture people in those sales, say, um, you know, the tried and tested, you know, 10 percent on your next purchase, free gift on your next purchase. So encouraging people to keep coming back. and. Uh, hopefully build up some loyalty points. Sweet. Thank you very much, Jason. Uh, unfortunately, we are right at time or right after time, unfortunately. So here's what I'm gonna do. Um, after this tomorrow, everyone in the audience, look out for the recording of this email. I'm going to include the speakers' LinkedIn's, like uh, Sarah, Jason, Zach, Greg, and Stewart's. I'm gonna include their LinkedIn's and emails uh, for y'all to reach out to directly. If you have any further questions at all, we want you to get those questions answered. We want you to uh, have a fantastic and highly successful time this holiday season. So thank you all again for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to let our panelists say bye real quick, and then I'm going to close this out. Um, so thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, everyone. Texas. Adios. Thank you very Feel much. Feel free to connect, everyone. Yep. All right, y'all. Have a good day. Thanks, Michael.